dear participants in this module we are continuing our discussion of how literature tries to represent the trauma of partition over the generations and how the different nature of media has also impacted the presentation of partition in different media the public domain media had emphasized the role of nation building in its analysis and reporting the official versions of history and historiographic highlight the nationalist theme and normally there is a silence about the human dimensions of loss and suffering of people commoners women minorities so there is an appropriation of historical facts for ideological means and normally there is a silence on reciprocal violence during partition at the same time we find that the codes of censorship and dominance of official and authorized versions of the past impeded storytelling about partition in contrast to that we find that literary representation of partition was seen as a possible way of coming to terms with the experience of violence people had faced during these days there was a sense of collective shame and numbing of psyche after the brutality which they had to witness i would quote saint here who says a kind of excess marked the outpouring of accounts of violence in the public domain this pornography of violence was characterized by a preoccupation with cataloging instances of debasement and degradation often with a vicarious investment of horrific episodes involving women from the other community the writing of testimonial coevals with partition the imperative of witnessing the anxiety about representation given the magnitude of horror and raw brutality of violence also affected the literary figures there was also a performing act of collective mourning a particular perspective with which literature was viewed so fictional representations may also serve as an antidote to official narrative about the past as well as to ersatz or artificially constructed memory literary modes of witnessing and remembrance reconstitute archival forms of historical records these literary modes use a wide range of strategies to depict the multiple level of violence violence which had taken place simultaneously at physical emotional and psychological levels literary modes of representation have used allegory symbolism irony as well as black humor use of allegories and symbols is often there to represent the traumatic memory of people there are also reflections on exile notion of the home which has been lost forever a feeling of homelessness as a result of forced migration and displacement there is also a self reflexive assessment of the very act of witnessing and the limits of fictive testimonies and the gray zone of memory often results into the ambiguous moral terrain of victims turned perpetrators so writings both challenge and reinforce communal violence often in literary representations too we can also say that different generations on the writing on partition have also responded in different ways if we look at the first generation of literary production on partition the literary works which had come out in 40s and 50s we find that they more or less try to present a graphic idea a graphic representation of the violence which they were looking at around them in its raw and brutal nature several novels about partition had come out before 1960s in urdu hindi as well as in english the common preoccupations were related with the act of witnessing presenting an overwhelming sense of bewilderment and meaninglessness a feeling of psychological numbness also the self reflexive mode of testimonial writing in the immediate aftermath of the partition can particularly be seen in the short stories of saadat hasan manto and insar hasan major works which came around this time 
and which constitute the first phase of literary representation about partition can be listed here. Mumtaz Shah Nawaz, The Heart Divided is a major work. These novels in Urdu presented a raw narrative with records of horrors and devastation and they also incorporate Ramanan Sagar's or in San Margya in 1948 and Krishan Chandar's Gadar, which also came out in 1960. The first major Hindi novel is Juta Sach by Yashpal, which is published in two parts, Vatan or Desh and Desh Ka Bhavishya. Amrita Pritam's novel Pinjar is also a very important signature of this time. Kartal Singh Dukkal's Punjabi novel Naun Temas is also an important literary work of this generation. This list would be incomplete without referring to the works of Sadat Hasan Bhatto. His fiction, particularly Sia Hashie, uses satire and black humor to depict the partition violence, carnage and loot. Other major works of fiction by Manto are Thanda Ghosht and Kholdo. His famous story, Toba Take Singh is an allegory for the madness of partition. It is also a critique of arbitrary borders, loss of home, as well as of the absurdity of categorization of mental patients on the basis of their religion, as well as the bureaucratic indifference to the exchange of populations. Some other major works are Khadija Mastul's Angan, which has presented a social realist treatment. Kushwan Singh's train to Pakistan, which can be viewed as a redemptive narrative and has a primacy of love story divided along religious lines. This novel is also important because it also presents the figure of a communist party worker and the helplessness of this worker in an atmosphere of communal frenzy. Bala Chandran Rajan's The Dark Dancer, published in 1958, is the allegory of the partition experience from the point of view of a South Indian expat. In the second generation writings, which came out after 1960s and during 1970s, we find that the temporal distance from the partition enabled complex narratives to emerge. It also enabled the literary writers to engage with the effects and legacy of partition through the trope of memory and there was a shift away from the social realist depictions of massacres and migration. The second generation novelists and short story writers started to experiment with new representational techniques and there was a nuanced complex negotiation of personal and collective memory as well as of identity crisis. There was a negotiation of the afterlife of partition and particularly after the formation of Bangladesh in 1971, several writers tried to look at the continuation of the legacy of partition. The disembodied forms of historical trauma continues to circulate even in the second generation, but at the same time we find that there is a perseverance of a form of post memory, excavation of memories of hitherto suppressed forms of reciprocal violence among survivors. At the same time, we find that there is a creation of reflective writings, negotiation of broader social, cultural, political and civilizational questions. For example, the works of Rahi Masum Raza are a nostalgic remembrance of a shared cultural life in small communities despite having religious differences. The major works of the second generation which can be listed are Kuratulain Haider's novel, Aag Ka Darya, as well as Atiya Hussain's Sunlight on a Broken Column. We have already referred to the works of Rahi Masum Raza and his prominent works include Aadha Gaon as well as Topi Shukla. Abdullah Hussain's The Weary Generations, Manohar Malgaonkar's A Band in the Ganges, Bhisham Sani's Tamas, which came out in 1974, and Intazar Hussain's Basti, which came out in 1979, are the important signatures of this time. There is a major shift in the partition literature after 1980s. It is also pertinent here to refer to Desha Humes and Ivy Kovic, 
who say that the time of partition invades the present structure mentalities and modes of representation around before and after. The recurrence of communal violence, sectarian or ethnic unrest in Pakistan harks back to the memory of partition which is often considered as the legacy of the partition by the more contemporary writers. The conception of blurred temporalities and specialities as an aesthetic or representational mode to understand the interconnections between the past and present are also an important feature of the partition literature since 1980s. At the same time, we find that this literature is dominated by the secondary and tertiary modes of witnessing. In the literary works of this time, we find that there is a reliance on testimonies of former refugees, a reliance on oral histories, archival and historical documents to represent the past. These narratives often feature protagonists who face intractable ethical and moral dilemmas in personal relationships rooted in the past or inherited from the past tangles and conflicts and the effects of a historical trauma. The excavation of silenced and alternative narratives of partition through postmodern techniques has also been taken up during this time. Some of the famous works which can be mentioned here are Krishna Baldevet's Guzra Hua Jamana, Salman Rushdie's Midnight Children, Manzoor Ehtesham's Sukha Bargat, Amitav Ghosh's Shadow Lines, Anita Desai's Baumgartner's Bombay in Clear Light of Day, Babsi Sidwa's Ice Candy Man, Manji Kapoor's Difficult Daughters and Shauna Singh Baldwin's What the Body Remembers. So, we find that the impact of postmodern techniques is discernible in the literature produced in the third generation. It is around this time that several oral history projects and the digitization of the history of partition has also been taken up. When we talk about the oral history, we find that it is linked with the memory work as an alternative to history which is based on archives. So, it is people's history which is seen as an alternative to the official history. So, it is a foregrounding of the personal stories of people and it also suggests what has been the impact of political history on the lives of ordinary people. Luisa Passerini argues that it may be that our attempt to retrieve memories can contribute to the emergence of freer cultural attitudes and the instatement of the problem of freedom at the center of history. In the third generation of people who are attempting to write about partition, we find that technology, digital media and social media have allowed them as well as organizations to collect, process and preserve partition history through oral narratives of refugees and survivors. The new media also promotes an interface outside mainstream textbooks and across political borders and a new conception of history which is living, which is interactive and participatory is gradually being built. Major projects which we can refer to are the 1947 partition archive, the citizens archive of Pakistan or CAP and Bolti Khidki. These oral history and digital archival and resource centers also facilitate exchange of ideas, material and allow communication between India, Pakistan and Bangladesh. These projects attempt to harness power of storytelling to create a different kind of museum, a memorialization of personal and micro histories, use of personal artifacts, photographs and documents to record the personal stories of people. The 1947 partition archive is the largest collection of oral histories of partition. Around 4300 oral stories on digital video from more than 350 cities from across the world are stored in it. It explores narratives from both sides of the borders and it is open to public. It also investigates the stories of migration and documents memories. CAP that is the digitization of Pakistan's history was started in 2007. So, it is a digitization of images and some oral narratives. Bolte Khidki is a digital initiative 
which shares narratives of partition survivors from India and Pakistan on its Facebook page and also promotes initiatives for fostering exchange program between the two countries. So, we see that in the print media as well as in the literary reproduction, partition has left a deep impact on the psyche of the writers. In different generations, we find that literary figures are responding to it in different way and at the same time, the changing media perspectives have also impacted the way people are trying to remember and think about partition and preserve its memory. We have looked at the two major types of media and how they look at the incidents which were unfolding during the days of partition. We have looked at how it has been represented in the major newspapers of the time. We have also tried to look at how different generations try to represent partition in literary attempts as well as through digital media platforms. Very briefly, we would look at how the representation of partition has been done in popular cinema in India and Pakistan. We find that the incident of partition has been memorialized through mainstream cinema. To begin with, we find that the event of partition influenced cinema in several ways. It also changed the dynamics of film industry in both India and Pakistan. So, there was a migration of artists, technicians, actors, filmmakers and singers etcetera. There was a division of film industry assets also. At the time of partition, Bombay and Lahore were the major centers of film making. So, there were influences at the level of diegetic content and narrative styles of films after the partition because of these incidents. Film itself can be treated as a medium to understand historical events as it constitutes a significant source for the representation of events in popular imagination. Still we find that the medium of film can be challenged. Can films accurately represent or recreate the cause effects and legacies of partition? Are they legitimate history or cultural documents of a particular era? As a site for creation of historical and cultural knowledge about the meaning of partition, what is their significance? Because they try to interpret partition rather than emphasize on the event per se. Films have also been treated as institutionalized sites of memory because they also reflect the way we culturally and historically remember a particular event. They function as mnemonic devices. Films based on partition events are treated as conduits to the past of the inextricably interwoven destinies of India and Pakistan. The themes which popular cinema has taken up in the context of partition are normally related with cross-border love scenarios, lovers who have been separated, families who are fearing and the trope of long lost kin, lost and found theme. All these resonate with memories and experiences of the partition of the Indian subcontinent. At the same time, we find that there is a fusion of literature and cinema. Partition writings of Kushwan Singh, Guratul and Hadar, Saadat Hasan Panto, Babsi Sidwa, Saifuddin Saif, etc. have been adapted into films. And in many cases, we find that the fictional work as well as the film adaptation have been equally successful and sensitive. Partition cinema is also supposed to have a certain cathartic value as it facilitates an effective emotional engagement. It helps create spaces for discourse, confrontation and debate as Ira Bhaskar suggests. Cinema as such is an alternative discourse of history telling and can in this way authenticate lived experience and cultural memory. In representing and confronting the trauma of partition, it paves the way for collective mourning and reflection in public space. Whereas newspapers and magazines report the historical incidents as they develop 
and unfold almost on a daily basis, there is a little scope of reflection in them. Reportage, particularly in newspaper and print media, is a spontaneous and it is also therefore caught up in the turmoil and confusion of the situation. Films allow a temporal displacement between the event and its representation, which also allows a certain time for consideration and assessment. We find that the Pakistani cinema in comparison is not as rich or vibrant as the Indian cinema. Post partition Pakistani cinema did produce some significant works and around a dozen movies have been made in Pakistan on the issue of partition. Main movies incorporate Gardar Singh, Khalakam Khan, Tauba, Lakho Me Ek, etc. Gardar Singh was a huge commercial success in Pakistan as well as in India. It represents a microcosmic sense of being Punjabi, which overrode all other isms, as Omar Adil has written about this movie. However, we find that the partition of Bengal has not been depicted enough. Some of interesting and notable exceptions are the movies by Ritwik Ghatak as well as a Bangladeshi film by Tanvir Mukammal with the title of Chitra Nadir Par. In comparison to the Pakistani cinema, we find that Indian cinema has been able to depict the themes of partition in a very different way. In the Indian cinema, we also find that there has been a dominance of the topos of love story and a love story is often seen as a way to resolve the socio-political conflicts and therefore, there is a tangential treatment of partition which is often used only as a backdrop. In these love stories, we find that the trajectory is chartered by the events of the partition and these movies can also be referred to here, for example, Chalia or Hena or Mammo or the box office sensation Gadar. There is a tendency to emphasize universal and humanist themes in Indian cinema when it comes to the treatment of partition and they gloss over political contradictions. There are very few movies which are conscious of the historical significance of the event. Because of the fear of controversy and safety, most of the filmmakers try to avoid the sensitivity of the subject and treat it only in such a way as can be a success on the box office. The work on partition actually began after 1984 as far as the treatment through film is concerned. Before that, there were novel short stories, but there was not any sustained discussion on these issues in films. Ira Bhaskar has also suggested that there are three phases of topos of partition in Hindi cinema. The first phase covers the time zone of 1947 to 62 roughly. The second phase is the 1970s and the third phase is from 1990s. In the first phase, we find that the common narrative of films was based on migration, abduction and consequent recovery of women. Yash Chopra's 1961 movie Dharam Putra addresses communal crisis, fundamentalism and the social and political reality of partition. Use of archival footage of refugee trains and partition caravans has also become popular in Indian movies. Caravans of thousands of refugees on foot carrying their meager possessions in search of a new homeland or traveling on the roofs of trains has become a stock image in these films based on partition. So, these visuals became a stock visual technique and a metaphor in partition films. These images also have a unique melodramatic value. So, these stock visual techniques have been invariably used in almost all the films which are based on partition. The second phase is based on 1970s. So, as we have seen in the context of literary reproduction, we find that the movies have also started to give way to the appearance of hidden emotions. So, the repressed issues in society 
which people were hesitant to talk about has come to be accepted as far as the film based discussion is concerned. The communal alienation and conflict, the unresolved wounds and memories of the partition violence are now being depicted with more sensitivity. At the same time, we find that in Indian cinema world, there was a rise of a parallel cinema and this art house or parallel cinema also became very popular with the academic crowd. So, we find that movies by Kumar Sahani, Mani Kaul, Amit Sathyu, Sham Benegal and Govind Nehlani were becoming popular. The best known partition films of the second phase are Garam Hawa of M. S. Satyu and the television serial turned into a movie later on that is Tamas by Govind Nehlani which had come out in 1989. Tamas was adapted from the partition novel of Bhishm Sahani with the same name. The novel as well as the serial as well as the film adaptation suggest that the political scheming exists behind the violence and it also graphically represented mob frenzy. It was a critique of religious fundamentalism as well as of the British indifference in controlling the eruptive violence in Indian cities. The third phase starts from 1990s. In the third phase, we find that there is a negotiation of issues of identity secularism and citizenship. Bhaskar has suggested that subjects which were considered as taboo for nearly 40 years were being talked about openly. Preconceived stereotypes and prejudice against one another, communal and racial sentiments, rise of fundamentalism in different languages as well as erosion of secular values was also being questioned now. Partition and its fraught legacy were directly confronted in films like Mammo, Train to Pakistan that is the 1998 movie and Earth which was released as 1947 in India. In the popular cinema, we can refer to certain other films like Refugee, Hey Ram, Veer Zara and Partition. Recent research on partition demonstrates that several acts were local in nature and they were carried out for reasons other than genocide. For example, many people wanted to capture property and wanted to abduct women and the communal frenzy of the partition days gave them a set opportunity for it. For example, the abduction of Puro in Pincher and betrayal of Shanta in Earth 1947 are clearly not entirely communal in nature. So, the dominant emphasis on religious divide obscured these subtleties in the previous treatment of these movies. However, in the third phase of movie making, we find that these subtleties are being discussed with a renewed sensitivity. Some films emphasize the influence of partition on the lives of common people and they shun the direct representation of violence. For example, in the movie Mammo, the displacement and indifference of immigration procedures and identity crisis are the major themes. Partition films are invariably associated with melodrama. Formal structures through which history is narrativized in partition cinema is always influenced by a certain melodrama. Melodrama with its historical associations with tragedy and realism can be seen as a way of looking at the world. It is also quite successful according to some critics in translating political themes onto a personalized plane. Interestingly, we find that the melodramatic features of most of the Indian movies ostensibly restrict the political potential of these narratives and they want to highlight the conventional topos which are more saleable. The epic scale of the diegetic universe is projected in these films through certain motives. For example, the centrality of family, representation of women as well as rhetorical acting style of different characters. Most of the partition movies are able to depict only a diegetic universe. 
The two terms digesis and mimesis are contrasted in literature since the days of Plato. Mimesis shows rather than tells. So, it can be treated as a part of stylistic devices because it tells us how a certain action is enacted. In comparison, digesis tells the story through a narrator. The narrator may be a character, an invisible voice or an omniscient narrator who might be speaking from the outside. So, in filmmaking, it is basically a story which is depicted on a screen unlike a real time screen narrative. So, characters or stories are presented within other characters and stories. So, films may include elements that are not intended for the primary narrative. Characters and events may be referred to elsewhere or in historical context and are therefore, outside the main story and thus they are presented in what can be termed as an extra diegetic situation. So, we have seen that the event of partition has been treated differently through different media. In the print medium as well as in the representation through films, certain elements are being modified or added to present a particular perspective which cannot be included in a different media form. At the same time, the changing nature of media and the growing interconnectivity of people, the fact that the audience can also participate in creating a content has also made new forms of memory record possible in the context of partition. So, we find that the same event is being depicted through different media with certain changes, which is essentially linked in an organic way with the cultural representation of a particular aspect of our national history. Thank you.